Hey, doll jockeys, Michael England here with Audio Sway Labs. Today we're going to be talking about what is a compressor and how does it work. Now I'm on my 2014 MacBook Pro. Um, I'm in Harrison Mixbus 32C. And the nice thing about Harrison is it gives me a noise gate, a compressor limiter, and the 32C EQ on every channel. So we're going to be looking at the compressor. Now, how does the compressor work? Now, right here, you're going to see where it says kick, 01 kick. Every time I move one of these knobs, you'll be able to see what I'm moving it to in that name slot. See, 10, 9, 8. So that's how I'm moving it. So I've got my threshold. I've got my makeup gain, attack, release, and ratio. And Harrison has an added feature where you can emphasize the frequency of it. Now, I'm not going to be using that. So let's take a look at the snare drum here. Uh, let's take a look at this snare drum, and we're going to see. Let me go over here. Okay, there's our snare drum. Put it over a compressor. And we're going to put some compression on this snare drum so that you can see how the compressor works what it sounds like to over compress and you know first of all what is the point of compression well have you ever been watching a movie and as you're watching this movie it gets really loud on the action parts and then they talk in a quiet part and all of a sudden you have to turn the remote up because you can't hear them anymore and then you have to turn it back down because it gets super loud that's compression and limiting. That'll help control that. So essentially what we want to have happen is we've got our snare drum. And we want our snare drum to have consistent hits so that it doesn't disappear or get too loud in our mix. We want it to be consistent. So we're going to compress it. Now I'm going to start off with the attack and the release. We're just going to pull the threshold down. Let's say to about 20 dB, negative 20 dB. So we know that snare drum is going to get hit. Okay, so now we see the meters start working. So something's happening. Turn the ratio way up so we can really get the sense of what's happening. Now the attack, this is how fast the compressor clamps down, so to speak, on the sound. With a slow attack, if I move it over here, you're going to hear the snare come in loud and then all of a sudden get compressed and quieter. See how the initial hit, you hear it pretty loud. Now if I make a fast attack, it's going to be softer because it's clamping down literally right as soon as the, the snare hits. See how much quieter that is? Now watch what happens, or listen to what happens as I go from fast attack, where it clamps down as soon as the snare transient hits, the initial part of the snare, and I go to a slow attack, meaning that it, it waits before it clamps down. Fast attack.
slow attack. Fast. See, it's clamping down as soon as the snare hits. And now it clamps down after the initial snare hit. Now, why would you want to use this? Well, let's say that you want the snare to be very consistent, which we do, right? Now, if I have a slow attack, that means that my snare is going to essentially come in uncompressed and then quickly compress. My slow attack is set to 100 milliseconds. That's the slowest this one will go. And let's listen to that. Okay. But really what I'm after is more consistent hit, right? So let's set down to our fastest, which is four milliseconds. Well, now see, it sounds overly compressed. It sounds like we've kind of squished the life out of it. Listen again. So it's a little too much compression. So what we can do is we can slow the attack Twelve milliseconds, that sounds pretty good. Eighteen milliseconds, that's nice. Okay, so that helps us to see what an overly compressed snare drum sounds like, and then what it sounds like when the compression is letting the initial snare hit and then clamping down on it. Now the release, the release time tells us how long the note is going to sustain for. You might think, why would a snare drum need to sustain? Well, let's go for a fast release, meaning that it's going to compress, let go, compress, let go, compress, let go. My release is five milliseconds. It's going to be very short. So listen to that. Okay, but what does a slow release sound like? A slow release is going to elongate those notes. So let's make a 500 millisecond or half a second release. Now listen. See, it makes the drum sound smoother, not so choppy, because the notes tend to ring into each other. Now, what if we did a fast attack with a fast release? It's going to be a very short note, right? We're attacking at four milliseconds, and we're letting go at five milliseconds. So while it does have compression on it, it's a very short snare drum. You get that initial hit and that's about it. Now what would a slow attack of 100 milliseconds with a slow release sound like? See, it kind of sounds a little weird because you get this initial hit and then this really long note. So generally, I'll go somewhere in between depending on what I'm going for. Like maybe I might do a 16 millisecond attack 
and let's say it's a ballad with a lot of space and I want the snare drum to kind of ring out a little bit and I put a reverb on it see a slow attack or a slow release with a moderate attack will get that for you now let's say it's a song with a lot of heavy guitars and it's moving really fast you know the drums are high tempo you're probably going to want a fast attack and a faster release so those are the the ways you can use the attack and the release to mold your sound now let's cover the simple aspects of the compressor which are the makeup gain now makeup gain is kind of self-explanatory let me turn the threshold up to where it's not even coming in hear how much louder my snare drum is now it's not being compressed or squished down so it's louder now let's say I put compression on it Now it's gotten quieter. I can use the makeup gain. To boost it back up. So that now it's compressed, but it's still as loud as it was before. So that's what makeup gain is going to do for you. So now let's take a look at what our ratio and threshold do. Now the threshold, here it's at zero dB. Well, if you've spent any time recording digital, you know that anything at zero dB above that, you're gonna start clipping. So basically what this is saying is, a signal at zero dB, that's where the compressor is gonna start kicking in, is if it goes to zero dB. But let's say your signal's not recorded there because you don't want to clip, right? So your snare drum, you're going to start pulling down your threshold. The threshold is the, the dB number at which the compressor starts to compress. And you're going to see this red meter start to jump here once it starts compressing. And it's just going to squeeze down the top peaks of the snare drum. So let's keep going down with the threshold. We're at 11, 12, negative 13, negative 14, 15, negative 17, negative 20. Okay. Let me turn up my ratio to, say, 3 to 1. And we'll explain ratio in just a second. Just to make sure... The compressor is kicking in. Okay, so now I've got one red bar. So I'm getting a little bit of compression at negative 20 dB. The lower I go, the more the compressor is going to kick in. If I want it to really squeeze down, I just keep lowering the threshold. So basically now it's set to where any signal above negative 40 dB is going to get compressed. And you see it's compressing really hard. Now most of the time what I like to do is use staged compression where I'll use multiple compressors that just bite away at it a little bit at a time to get it evened out so that it sounds natural and not overly squished. So let's say around negative 20 is where we're going to set our threshold. See, it still sounds very natural, but I'm getting a little bit of compression, just a little bit. Negative 25, 
hits considerable bit more compression. So let's stay around negative 22. I feel like my threshold there is getting me a nice bit of compression without making the snare drum sound altered in any way. Yeah, about negative 20. Okay, so we're getting a good bit of compression there. Now, what does the ratio mean? I saved that for last on purpose. So how does our ratio work? Now with the ratio, if I set it one to one, that means that the compressor won't come on. See, I have no red light. However, let's say I set it two to one. That means that for every two decibels, it goes above the threshold, it's going to drop it one decibel. If I go eight decibels over, it's going to divide by two and it's going to drop it four decibels. If I go 10 decibels over the threshold and I'm at a two to one ratio, it's going to decrease the signal or attenuate, compress the signal by five dB. Now a three to one ratio, two to one is a light or subtle compression. Let me let you hear that. See, it just kind of barely comes on. Three to one, is starting to get into more moderate compression. See, it's starting to hit up into negative four territory because we're going over our threshold. If I go to a five to one, four to one, five to one, I'm starting to get into heavier compression. But let's say I get up into eight to one. At this point, I'm starting to get into very heavy compression and near limiting. See, it's starting to climb the red meter. Now, let's say I go 10 to 1 or higher. That is getting into limiting territory. And I'll explain limiting here in a second. See, it's really starting to clamp down on the snare drum. Now, essentially what a limiter does, if I switch over, is a limiter sets a threshold and won't allow the signal to go over it. So let's say I'm at 20 to 1 on my limiter and yeah, look how high it's cutting the signal. And notice here my meter. It's not going above where my mouse is. Let's say I drop it further. My threshold. it just lowers how far the signal can go. You can use makeup gain to try to increase it, but you're cutting the signal way down. Limiting, or sometimes called a brick wall limiter, means that it won't go above what you have set as the threshold. So that's the difference between limiting and compression and how you would use a compressor. And as always, don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already for more tips like this, more training. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.